I actually did quite a few different things before I was an MP. Um, my first ever job was as a Saturday assistant at WH Smith's in Ealing Broadway when you used to have a brown pinafore at the time. Uh, then I graduated on to being a Saturday assistant at Ealing Central Library. I've worked for Ealing Council, had uh, jobs at the BBC, kind of short, shortish jobs in other places, but the main thing I did was university lecturing. So right up until May 2015, um, I worked at Kingston University and I even did a bit of it after I was elected because with a swing seat it was not definite that I would win so I didn't give in my notice until I knew I'd won so I was marking exam scripts as an MP which brings you right back down to earth someone's kind of messily handwritten thing that you're trying to figure out I wanted to be an MP because I thought that Parliament needs more ordinary people who are non-politicians. So, I mean, the first time I got a House of Commons pass was as an MP. I think it's unhealthy if we have uh, too many people that are just in the Westminster bubble or whatever you call it, that have worked for MPs who become MPs. Um, and as a Labour Party member in Union Central and Acton, when they advertised they were looking for a candidate to take on the then Conservative MP, I put my name forward to see what happens. I won my seat in May 2015, so it was a strange mix of emotions because obviously it was elation at the personal triumph of turning what was a blue seat red, but tinged with the sadness at the overall picture because we knew that uh, the Conservatives were back again, so it was a strange... If I had a pound for every text message that said a ray of light on a bleak night, I'd have a lot of little round ones by now. A lot of people were texting me the same thing. I mean, I think the one word to describe Parliament is awesome. And that's not in a sort of American teenager, awesome kind of way, but it truly is an awe-inspiring building. It is a palace. It's an honour and privilege to work in the Palace of Westminster to represent people that, in my case, I grew up with, that I still live amongst. Um, it's an amazing privilege. And uh, I, I'm still pinching myself I'm here at all. I think the day that it becomes normal, I'd have become sucked into the system. So I'm enjoying every minute of it. The first time I spoke in the Commons Chamber was for my maiden speech and uh, again it's slightly awe-inspiring at first yeah, yeah, yeah. but then I think once you get into the flow and um, I had supportive colleagues around me and um, so I think there's a clip of Mrs Thatcher on her last PMQs where she goes I'm enjoying this so sort of the more I went on the more enjoyable it became. In a maiden speech, I think there is a kind of formula. You have to praise your predecessor or predecessors fulsomely, um, and then you describe your constituency. So I painted a pen portrait of Ealing Central and Acton, which is quite a diverse seat because um, Ealing and Acton are two separate places. They're quite different in character. And I described how, I think I said something like, Mr. Speaker, in fact, it was Madam Deputy Speaker, you've probably seen my seat without knowing, because lots of it has been in TV programmes before. So the tower blocks at the beginning of Only Fools and Horses were not Peckham, those were the South Acton estate. And also, I think some of the 70s sitcoms, um, Terry and June was originally in Ealing. even sure what I was expecting with a with a sort of toss-up unpredictable swing seat I don't think I ever took anything for granted I'm not precisely sure what I was expecting um, but it's an amazing role because it's uh, so many different things in part it's being a shameless exhibitionist and orator in the Commons Chamber but then some of it is a lot less glamorous um, Maybe a bit like being a social worker when you have the complex cases that people that come into your surgery, that it's not even one categorizable thing they've got. It's not just a housing issue or an immigration issue. It's several things all going on at once. So 
Um, it's not called The West Wing, certainly. So I, I think because I had not that many expectations, I never assumed I would be there. It's difficult to answer that question, but it's immensely rewarding once you're on it. One surprising thing about Parliament is the number of people that work here in many different capacities, different roles. So it's not just the 650 MPs who hang out in Parliament. But I found actually a lot of my constituents, because I am a London seat, so there's a Graham in computing, he lives at Eden Common, there's a Simon in the post office, when I go in there he says, oh that's my MP, he lives in Acton, uh, I think there's someone in the canteen, Lucy, <laughs> there is um, even Vanda, who I believe will be splicing up this film once we've made it, from AV. So I'm always continually amazed at the range and diversity of different employment opportunities there are within the parliamentary estate. Uh, I think my biggest challenge uh, to some extent has been that I just don't look like an MP. So sometimes um, going somewhere like the terrace you have to be accompanied by an MP. So people have said, which MP are you with? And then I've had to tell them, I am an MP. So that sort of, and also, to some extent, I'm representing people, including my own teachers. When I was knocking on doors, the Labour Party sets a lot of store on this uh, knocking on doors and having conversations. Sometimes I'd meet people that sort of remembered me from double maths in 1985 or whatever. So and then <laughs> re-imagining me as the MP. Most people have been very welcoming, and even the people who have said, where do you think you're going? I think it's because it's teething troubles and they're just getting used to all the new faces. Um, I would say, in a political sense, um, asking Prime Minister's questions, I think that the usual frequency they say that on any normal uh, balance of probabilities, because there are 650 of us and there are 15 slots at PMQs, so when it looks all very spontaneous, it's actually literally pulled out of a hat. So people say you should get about two a year, but I've had five. And even my uh, Ealing neighbour, Steve Pound, the Ealing North MP, uh, recently I had a group of people in and I said, Steve, come and meet my constituents. And he said, you're here on a rare day because Rupert Huck has not been drawn for a question. So, I mean, that has been quite exciting. There's been so many highlights, actually. I mean, it was a... It was amazing to be drawn to do a three-hour debate on um, the NHS in London in my name, so I led that debate. And also, it was a highlight to get a ticket through the all-party parliamentary group on music, which I'm vice chair of, to the Brit Awards. I guess if we rewind time back to May 2015, um, Back at that time, there were three Labour MPs that were my colleagues who are no longer with us. And those range from one who'd been there a long time, Michael Nietzsche, to two who came in at the same time with me. So there are these sort of photos of all the class of 2015 when we got in. <laughs> two people from that picture aren't here anymore. Um, that's Harry Harper, who was the last they were saying he's the last deep surface miner and Joe Cox which is a very tragic and unusual case of being murdered on the street outside her surgery what I'd have done differently I guess is spent maybe more time with them but who was to know they wouldn't be here now Um, I'm a London MP, so I'm fortunate that it's not very far away to get back to the constituency. So usually, sort of Monday mornings, I do an assembly in the school, um, and the two schools I went to are both in my seat. Uh, I do sort of things in Ealing up until 2.30, the house sits. So usually by lunchtime, I like to be setting off and be back here in good time for 2.30. Then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm completely in Westminster. Friday, all day in Ealing. 
Although, having said that, Friday are private members' bills, so uh, some of my colleagues had bills on Fridays that usually the Northern MPs or further flung people wouldn't come back for that I, it's very easy for me to come back for. The one other thing that I think London MPs probably have it tougher than others is that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday nights I will often have a residence association or Ealing Civic Society or tomorrow night I have um, Ealing Decorative and Crafts Association. So I do evening engagements also in, in the constituency, whereas I think people from more far-flung places, they sort of come on Monday and that's it, they're gone until um, Friday or Thursday. An MP's job in some senses is seven days a week and almost 24 hours a day. The House of Commons, first thing they give you, even before you get a physical office, is an iPad which takes you straight into the House of Commons documentation and your parliamentary email. So that sort of means you're never out of the office. But I quite like that because before that system, you would get into work on a Monday in my previous jobs and have a thousand emails or whatever, you know, a big pile of emails to look at. So I quite like the way that you can work as you go. And some of the weekend functions that I have, often they're things like I mean, yesterday was the Ealing Jazz Festival. They're fun things I'd like to be doing anyway. So, um, although sometimes looking at the electronic diary can look a bit scary, most of it is fun stuff. I mean, I'm a family person, so those kind of family events I would be doing anyway. I think for anyone wanting to be an MP, it's important to remain grounded and I think to have a career first because I think it's just unhealthy if there's a very narrow gene pool so I do careers evenings I've done even before I was an MP for the last however many years at my old school Notting Hill and Ealing High and um, they used to put me on a table called teaching and then last year they put me on one called politics and I and just to the people coming saying how do I be a politician I was saying it's good to have another career to fall back on or on the way there to be doing and I think it just makes you a more rounded person um, just having other hinterland that could be interest or children I know people have been attacked for that recently but I mean all those things count as well having interest in Okay, one thing you probably don't know about Parliament is that there are three ladies' rooms that are dotted around, at least three, there may be more I haven't discovered, and um, there are lady members' rooms, so you can only go in there if you're a woman MP, and they have in there um, a little sofa, a, a TV where you can get what's going on in the chamber, a phone, and an intercommunicating door, oh, there's a loo, one of them has a shower, and another intercommunicating door with a bed in it. So if it all gets too much, you can have a lie down. And the other day I was in one of those rooms, I think making some phone calls after I'd been in the chamber, because my office is quite far from the chamber. And I heard this strange noise. It was someone snoring who really was having a kip. I didn't find out who they were, because I think the bell was ringing and we had a vote.